Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Mohammed and I'm a VMware VB expert. And today we are going to perform a stress storage test against this storage technology. And this is the Intel Obtain storage technology. And this piece of hardware is the Intel Obtain NVMe SSD. And I'm really glad that Intel has shared with me a few samples of this piece of hardware to test in my lab. So yeah, I will be performing uh, multiple uh, stress tests uh, across uh, different platforms. And the most important one, of course, is VMware vSAN 8 with the new architecture, which is the ESA. ESA stands for, yeah, the Express uh, Storage Architecture. Yeah, so if you like the video, please consider uh, subscribing to the channel and sharing uh, this video. Uh, we are going to start with a few quick slides and then we will be going um, to the demo right after. Okay, so let's go. All right, so this is the content of our um, presentation and um, what, um, what I'm going to, to do in, in the lab. Uh, so first things first, what is, uh, what's Intel Obtain technology? I will be sharing um, a link or two about, um, about that tech. Yeah, so in these slides we will discuss yeah what what makes Intel Obtain storage technology different from other um, um, SSD um, technologies. What is uh, the VSN ESA and VSN OSA versus ESA? What's in my lab setup? Uh, wh what kind of tests I'm going to do? So I'm going to perform a test against uh, uh, SAS SAS disks, hard disk drives. Okay, and we, we shall compare it with traditional SSD or NAND SSD also in my lab. And yeah, of course, um, uh, another test um, uh, for the Intel Obtain NVMe. And I will be using a Windows tool called uh, ETO, uh, storage test. It's from the company uh, ETO, if you know it, they produce um, uh, storage equipment um, and networking equipment. All right, um, and then th the last one is the most stressful one, uh, which is the uh, the VSAN, uh, the VSAN stress test, and I will be using the uh, HCI uh, bench tool from VMware to perform it. I will be sharing, of course, uh, links for uh, for all of these and more information about the uh, HI uh, bench. Uh, finally, I will be transparently um, giving you details about my physical lab setup um, and yeah, in this video and also um, um, on, on, on the blog. So let's get, let's get started. So what uh, what what basically makes uh, Intel Obtain SSD uh, better than the traditional um, SSD is that Intel Obtain does not, does not use the garbage collection or the garbage collector for um, uh, freeing up uh, blocks to rewrite um, data. So yeah, in in the traditional NAND SSD, the garbage garbage uh, collector uh, collection technique is used to free up space, but in Intel Obtain. It, it can directly uh, write the data on the same uh, on the same uh, block, and this of course makes um, a, a big difference um, in, in performance. So uh, yeah, instead of wasting uh, performance resources on uh, uh, freeing up uh, block spaces or the disk space, yeah, uh, in Intel Obtain you can or it can directly uh, rewrite data um, on the same uh, place without yeah. Um, the need of freeing up a space uh, first. All right, uh, Intel Obtain storage is available in, in uh, different uh, form factors. So it's available in, in PCIe, and this is the model I have in my lab, and also in U.2. So it, it depends on your uh, hardware configuration and how are you going to uh, tailor that hardware and of course the, there are uh, there's already um, ready um, uh, nodes for vsan ready nodes equipped with intel obtain yeah so yeah again when you uh, when you go um, through that process with the account manager um, or the yeah sales uh, representative um, 
you should be choosing the um, yeah the, the best form factor that suits uh, the needs and the, the hardware that you will be uh, purchasing okay and this uh, th this model series the P4800X is uh, the data center grade um, models and there are also um, end user uh, models avail available for uh, for home usage or uh, yeah just uh, non data center usages but today the test i will be making is considered a data center uh, stress test okay now vsan so what's the the difference between osa and dsa so uh, vmware has introduced a new uh, storage architecture for vsan in vsan um, 8 which is the ESA and ESA yeah, stands for Express um, Storage, Ar Storage Architecture. And what exactly is the main difference between both the older uh, architecture or the traditional architecture, which is the OSA and nowadays it, it's called the OSA. So this is the architecture we are used to, you know, the uh, disk groups and different layers or different tiers, the uh, capacity tier, the cache tier, yeah, but all of that is is let's say is gone or um, reformed in in the um, ESA. So in the ESA, a new architecture is introduced, uh, which is the storage pool. So no more storage, uh, no more disk 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 groups. All of the disks within the cluster are considered in in a single storage pool, right? And no more tiers, no caching tiers, and no capacity tiers. So no more wasted disk capacity yeah everything or every single uh storage unit is being used as a capacity in the uh, as, a, as a capacity tier let's call it in the esa which of course saves yeah saves a lot of capacity and money indeed and the esa is more optimized for um NVMe uh, storage technology. Okay, what's the uh, what's in the lab? I will be performing the the test on a vSphere eight and a vSAN eight, of course. And I have uh, three ESXi hosts. Each host is equipped with a couple of uh, CPU sockets and yeah, some memory. And each uh, each host is equipped with two Intel Optane NVMe SSD um, PCI um, uh, storage di disks. All right. All right. So let's uh, switch to the lab. Okay. So here's my lab, and this is the um, the vSAN cluster, and I have, as mentioned in the uh, presentation, three ASXi hosts in it. Let's check one of them for the uh, for the hardware yeah so this is the, the the storage these are the storage devices so yeah it has um this um intel obtained nvmes and here's the uh, capacity 280 gigs and contributing to this data store so let's go to that data store so this is the vsan data store yeah and uh, let's inspect it um, yeah this is the uh, total capacity and each of these hosts is contributing with two um until obtain nvmes All right okay uh i have some uh, yeah these are the uh, cluster uh, the cluster monitoring uh, nodes so you can, we can just ignore this for now i have here um a machine to use for testing uh, let's power that on yeah because the uh, I had to t turn off the DRS to run the, um, the stress test okay um, this will uh, boot very fast of course so I, I need first to, to show you uh, the stress test on the lower um, storage tiers, let's call it. So I will run a test against SAS and a NAND SSD. And then the last one will be against um, the, um, the vSAN uh, data store from 
a Windows 10 machine using the uh, the Eto storage stress uh, stress tool. Okay, and the last one, the last test we will be uh, going through is the um, uh, the stress test against the uh, the VSAN um, the VSAN uh, cluster itself. All right, so let's go to a VM. So this is the first VM I'm going to use for the testing and it's not hosted on the uh, vSAN data store or uh, the vSAN cluster. So uh, this VM has two disks. One of them is, is located on um, NAND SSD and the other one, yeah, the other disk is located on uh, SAS disk. So yeah, let's, um, yeah, again, these are the, the disks here on the machine. I will be using the um, Atos storage benchmark tool. I will run the uh, the test. Uh, the first uh, the first test I will run um, will be against the uh, the SAS drive, which is the the slowest. Yeah, and then uh, I think I just need to switch it off. Yeah, power, and open it once again to detect the new disk. Uh, yeah, so again, the um, the first test will be on the SAS drive, and then the traditional SSD, and then finally uh, the final one on the um, um, Intel Optane disks. All right, uh, and the reason behind this is, uh, yeah, I just want want you to to see a comparison between different uh, storage tiers, how the performance is is. Um, on each of them right um, if I'm not mistaken the, these disks are 15k I'm not 100% sure but either way it's just a SAS technology all right um, yeah let's start it should take a few minutes and um, on the blog I will be sharing screenshots of the of each test with each condition um, yeah I will pause the video for um, I may pause it or fast forward it, not sure. Yeah, until it's um, it's done and then we continue. All right, so the the test of the SAS is done, and uh, yeah, I've decided not to um, pause the video f just for the transparency. So yeah, uh, I just uh, f fast forwarded the um, uh, the video. Okay, so uh, this test um, run on different I/O and block sizes. So as, if, as you can see here, yeah, these are the speeds of the read, the writes, and reads. Okay, so remember this. I will take a screenshot right away, of course, of that. Uh, yeah, 300, 300. Let's make another test, but let me first take a, a screenshot of that. Okay. To put it um, on the blog post. Um, paint. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the first one. Nice. Let's keep it for now. Let's get back there, and let me change the uh, the disk from SAS to uh, to the the C drive, which is on the SSD. Yeah, let's run the same test, the same specs, no changes. And let's see.
All right. And the other one is also done, so let's check the values here. Oh. Oh my god, so it's doubling here, yeah, the fastest one for, um, yeah, the fastest one for the read here is this one, I believe, 700, no, that one, 800, yeah, 800 megabytes per second, and for uh, the read uh, tests, uh, sorry, for the, for the write one, yeah, we can say also for, um, yeah, almost 400 megabytes right let me also take another screenshot of that to put it on the blog nice okay so we we have two test results now and um yeah let's make one final one on uh, on the operating system level using the same utility so this virtual machine here this one is hosted on the um, on the vSAN uh, data store yeah it has only one disk all right so let's run the test and see this one is on the Intel Optane NVMe SSD Yeah, it's done. Nice. Yeah, let me. All right. So let's see the results. Oh my god. So as you can hear, as you can hear, see the results are yeah. Yeah, this is even. This is even even better. So we can hear see uh, reads at uh, one. One gigabytes and the rights also yeah we can see here the rights at almost uh, 860 so yeah let me take a screenshot first and then uh, before screenshot let me just yeah compare this to the NAND SSD and see if there's a big difference or not which one was it? Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Nope. Uh, sorry. Uh, quickly do this. Yes. Let me expand it a bit. For you? Yeah. So yeah, now the results side by side. So this one on the um, which drive was it? Yeah, this one on the uh, SSD, traditional SSD, the NAND SSD, and this one on the um, uh, Intel Optane, uh, the NVMe. Yeah, so I can see here some better results on the traditional. NAND, it's a little, little, let's let's check. Yeah, uh, on the website it will be easier for you for you to read, but uh, maybe uh, yeah, this is the um, uh, fifteen twelve for example. Yeah, these these are aligned. Uh, yeah, so here um, for example, this is um, the right here is eight seventy. This is again this is on the until obtain. If we go here, this is only three. Hundred, oh wow. Okay, so n nothing here is is exceeding one gig. Okay, but here if we can see read this for example, uh, yeah, this here is one one gig for reading and seven hundred for writing. This is on a block size, 
looks as of one megabyte so let's check the one megabytes there also and see yeah so this is the one megabytes here and that one is only 200 and this that one is only almost 500 wow yeah of course i will uh <laughs> i will be sharing all of this on the uh on the blog uh but at least you can see some difference here uh, i just don't want to miss these let me save them before we proceed yeah so this one is the SAS yeah let's save it on the desktop here for better uh, on desktop let me create a new folder yeah let's call it Eto test so let's call this file the sas okay yeah so this one is the sas let's close it uh, here is the other one on the ssd yeah let's save that one also here let's call this land ssd yeah, and here's the final one. Let's take a snapshot. This is the Intel NVMe. Intel Obtain. Intel Obtain NVMe. All right. Uh, let's call this, yeah, Intel Obtain VME. All right. So now we have three screenshots for three different storage for, for uh, three tests for three different storage um, tiers. All right. Um, what else should we do now? Yeah, the final stressful test. It will be performed on the uh, cluster level, the vSAN cluster level. So I should go to uh, the Fling. Uh, sorry, the um, uh, the uh, H HCI machine show, uh, 10 one if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the root and and the password. So yeah, so this is the the interface. This is, this is the web interface of the HCI bench. Um, utility and uh, this one is um, you can find it at, at the Flink's website. I will put, of course, a URL for uh, for that one uh, in the description and in, in the blog as well. So you can, if you if you're not familiar with it, so you can use it. So this is a very powerful utility that you can use to run a storage stress test against um, your vSAN cluster. You can also use it on traditional data stores, not only vSAN. Yeah, but I'm using it here for vSAN, so it pushes your ASXi hosts and the storage layer to the limits, to the yeah maximums available uh, according to the uh, resources you have. Yeah, so you just need to fill in some of the information here and make sure that the networking information is uh, properly configured and yeah, uh, the hosts, uh, the, uh, the VMs, yeah, because this tool will be deploying like agent VMs that will be running that stress test. So you, yeah, make sure that the um, you put in the the correct um, um, port group that will be used uh, by these uh, agent VMs. I call it the agent VMs, right? You just need to yeah uh, validate and then run the test. So let's make a quick validation. Um, actually, this test will take several hours, and yeah, I, so I, I, I will have to, to pause the video and then come back. Uh, yeah, so if we focus here on the cluster, and these are the virtual machines, yeah, you will see here, just give, give it a, yeah, these are the test VMs. This is just um, a pre-check before it kicks off. Yeah, so it, it deploys uh, on each host. It deploys just one to make sure that it's able to um, uh, 
schedule a VM and uh, provision it, I mean, and uh, uh, th that each can obtain uh, a, um, an IP address if I click on one of these for, yeah, let's wait for it to, it, it would, but I just need to be sure that it will um, obtain an IP address from the uh, DHCP server. If you don't have the HCP server available on the VLAN of your choice, then yeah, you uh, it can automatically uh, also work as a as a as the HCP. I mean the uh, HCI uh, bench utility. Yeah, now it it, it was able to uh, it has been assigned an IP successfully for my uh, DHCP range here in the lab. All right, so yeah, and it should now once this is done, it should clean up these VMs it's still uh, validating let's give it just a moment or I can just yeah cancel it but let's give it a moment to test so I, I'll pause um, the video for now okay so the validation is successful and it, it says here yeah network traffic is fine yeah so uh, the environment has been validated please go ahead and kick off the test yeah you just go and just start the test it will open another pop-up yeah let's give it yeah uh no 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 not save results sorry so uh, i just need to kick off no just to start yeah click start yeah Another progress uh, window, and if we get back to the V center here, yeah. more VMs. A lot of VMs actually will be deployed according to the um, yeah available uh, resources on, on on each of the the hosts and in, uh, in the um, in the cluster. Okay, let's just give it a moment to make sure that it uh, started this all right so yeah it's just deploy yeah the deploy the, the, the deployment started here of the vms now yeah, now more vms are being uh deployed and yeah all right it's gonna take several hours so i will uh pause the video and continue right after so see you in a few hours Welcome back. So the test is done and I've downloaded the uh, results package. And yeah, you can just, uh, if you go where? There is the web browser. Yeah, there it is. You can just here click on save um, results. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's extract the package. And see what's in there. So it uses also a, it uses a Grafana for um, the visualization, and yeah, it, it, it contains a good um, uh, diagrams. Honestly, okay. What do we have here? Okay, so we have multiple tests. Okay, on different block sizes. So this one is 70% read, all right, and 100% random. Uh, this one is 100% um, read, yeah, 50 read, yeah, 100% random. All right, so uh, yeah, let's uh, open maybe these Excel files. I just want to change the layout a bit. Uh, let me change this not to list. Um, maybe medium icons. Yeah, this is this is a bit better. So yeah, let's let's open some of these files and see what exactly is in there. So this is a report. Okay. About uh, about that that test. All right. And these are the performance results listing here everything you need to know about the performance 
with nice graphs. So yeah, with that test, thirty thousand um, IOPS across the um, uh, per second, of course, across the, the the entire cluster. So the more hosts you have and the more compute power, of course, you would you would ha you would gain um, more IOPS. Uh, what's this block size again for this test? Yeah, so the block size here here is 4K, so small um, small block sizes. And this explains why there is a high um, yeah high IOPS total throughput. This one yeah, there is some uh, yeah read latency and write latency. I I, I believe this is uh, this is across the entire cluster, so not not just um, um, on a single host level across the um, it's on the cluster level. Yeah, um, more results. These are the number of the agent VMs that ran the, the test. Okay, and this is the block size. Yeah, it's already there. Total outstanding. So yeah, uh, the read uh, read ratio seventy percent. Um, yeah, and more. Yeah. I will try to include some uh, uh, some of uh, some uh, graphs of these uh, on the website because the the package, the uh, the um, report package um, is one hundred and twenty megabytes in size. So I'm not sure if I can. Uh, I'll try to maybe uh, host it somewhere so you can go through it. Okay. Uh, these were the the dashboards. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Let's let's click on it. And see if it opens I think it's gonna work let's give it a moment yeah so this is the the dashboard and during during the test you can see that live on the um, on the uh, the HCI bench uh, uh, tool yeah you, you can see it all right um, let's minimize this, this one of the reports Let's have another one. Maybe this is in text format. Yeah, this is just the the header of the report in in text. I I, I may yeah I, I may share these uh, text uh, text results on the, on the blog. Uh, here is another one. Yeah, and this one is uh, also 4K and 100% read. Let's see. I don't know why 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 Adobe is making this arrow that tiny. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, more IOPS here because the read is increased. More throughput here. Okay. Uh, latency no write latency because this test is not about write. It's only about read. So we have some read because this is usual because this is a. Uh, stressful tests so these results are fine but again yeah it's it's the judgment is is to all of you yeah is this product really worth it is the technology worth it or not but yeah it's up to you so yeah read and yeah the rest is the same let's have another one uh yeah this one is different here so this is on different block size this is um 8k uh this time 50 percent read so yeah there should be also 50 percent uh right let's check and uh, this is a random these are the details here this is the utilization across the cluster for the cpu during that test and this is very useful, really. Yeah, of course, less less IOPS here because the uh, the block size got got a bit bigger, so it got doubled. So this time is, is eight. And when we when we check the uh, two hundred sixty five uh, uh, two hundred fifty six um, k, k um, block size reports, we will find the IOPS are. I'd assume that it would be uh, lower. Okay, throughput here we have yeah some latency on. On writes and reads but again this is within I believe this is nothing uh, 30 um, 34 34 uh, uh, milliseconds is is nothing uh, yeah, I think so uh, yeah 
let's check the last one here. Yeah, this one is 265 and zero reads, and this is, yeah, 100% writes. Okay, so let's see. This is the utilization. Very nice. Okay, performance charts. Yeah, yeah, so less IOPS, as you can see here, because the block size got bigger. Throughput is not bad at all yeah we have here way um way higher yeah higher uh, higher latency because it's only on on right no, yeah uh, no latency for read because again this is just um, a read uh, sorry a, a write uh, stress test block size nice yeah i find it i find it good uh, that's, that's my uh, personal opinion of course yeah, um, yeah. I think we are we are done. Uh, one final thing to the, yeah. One uh, final thing to discuss about before that. Um, uh, I have deployed a, a VM. Yeah, th um, yeah. That Windows 10 VM that I used for the the test, and it took it f literally five minutes from the start of the. Um, Installation wizard till the the end of the uh, uh, the OS preparation and uh, not the OS preparation but till the uh, the Windows files were copied and the setup was done and the first reboot. So yeah, it took five minutes. I think this is quite fast, and uh, I, I haven't actually tested uh, cloning VMs. Uh, I'd assume it should it should be it should be fine. We can also test it uh, together here to clone uh, a powered-on VM, for example, this one here, to see is it quite fast or not. So yeah, that, that would be really helpful for uh, VDI uh, use cases. So th this VM is 17. Uh, the used space is uh, 70, almost 18 um, gigabytes. Let's uh, let's see. We need to run a. Yeah, let me clone this VM. Uh, clone to a virtual machine, maybe, yeah. without any, uh, just, yeah, let's see, is it going to be fast w w with the VM uh, powered on or not, so Windows 10, clone, I just want to, uh, wait a second, yeah, network interface, adapter, yeah, blah, 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 uh, this should work fine. No, no, on the cluster here. Yeah, sorry. Should be cloned there. Yeah, on any of these hosts. Uh, I just want to start. Um, yeah, let's choose the data store. Everything as the source. I think if I clicked, um, if I clicked next. Yeah, this is the nothing. This is the summary. Okay. So this is the summary of the VM. 18 gigabytes let me start um, I think there's a counter on Windows or stopwatch I believe so I believe there is one no yeah, I believe there is one stopwatch there should be one here on Windows uh, Windows 11 anyway let me do it on my on my phone Stopwatch. Okay, so this is the stopwatch here, and I will. Yeah, I will hit the the start button with the next here. So yeah. Yep. Okay. Time here started. I hope you see it. Yeah, and the the process is still going down there. Let's see. How much time is it gonna take to clone a, a 18 gigabytes VM?
Yeah. So it's done. So it took less than six minutes. It took less than six minutes to clone a powered on 18 gigs, 18 gigs VM. Yeah. Okay. Is that fast enough for you or uh, slow? Yeah. It's up to you, of course. All right. Uh, the last thing here. Yeah. The the truth about my lab because of course that um, stress test uh, is, is affected by the resources you have in, in a lab or, or in, um, in your production so I have one physical host which is um, a HPE um, DL380 Gen 9 server equipped with yeah 192 gigs of RAM and this one uh, has six um, Intel, um, Intel Obtain NVMe SSD uh, PCI Express uh, disks installed into all of all of its available uh, um, PCI Express um, slots, and uh, I'm performing a, a pass through PCI pass through for all of these uh, PCI devices to each of the um, these hosts in, in, in the cluster so um, yeah so more or less or not less more of course in, in, in production environments in real production environments with correct sizing and the yeah the proper uh, ready notes for your uh, needs you would gain of course way higher performance than the one I got but again yeah this is a small uh, test uh, based on the resources I have. So, thank you very much for uh, for following up. I think uh, we are done with the presentation. Nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. So, yeah, thank you very much for um, for watching. And uh, again, if you liked it, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe and reshare uh, share this this video. And um, yeah. In, in, in social media platforms, LinkedIn, maybe Facebook, whatever. All right, um, that's it. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day.